Rise and Shine. It's 6 a.m. and we have good news for you. It's Friday, so it's going to be an awesome day. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Rise and Shine, it is 6 o'clock on your Friday the 16th. Yeah, that's the best news. Uh, if you don't like the rain, well, eh, be prepared for that. Uh, but, you know, it's going to be an interesting weekend. I, I told Mike earlier, I think it's like a little something for everybody. It's going to be rainy, then cold, and then we'll see some sun. And very, very warm temperatures. Got to get through the weekend first because yeah. it's going to be another cold one. We're looking at another freeze. Definitely a good hard freeze in portions of the hill country. Um, this morning we are starting off on the damp side. You can see uh, just kind of kind of hazy looking out there, looking at the skyline from our camera down at Brook City Base. And there's the rain. As expected, southeastern half of the area. We still have some showers basically from downtown down to the uh, southern portion of Bear County. Uh, even a couple of decent showers right there just to the north of Kennedy all sliding in the, the whole. The rain itself is kind of moving off to the northeast, but this whole mass is wanting to slide to the east and even a nice little uh, shower pretty good downpour popping up right there just to the south of Elmendorf. So this will continue to be the situation throughout the rest of the morning. We keep a few more showers around here. Unfortunately, hill country, you're not going to be getting anything. Then the rain is going to be moving out by later on this afternoon. 61 degrees is the, the current temperature. So we are anywhere from 15, 16, 17 degrees above normal all around the area. And of course, yeah, a ton of humidity out there. Mold and ash are on the low side. Looks like Mountain Cedar may finally be on out of here, which is pretty much uh, on par with uh, every other year. Right around Valentine's Day, just after that is when the Mountain Cedar season comes to an end. Of course, we have oak right around the corner. We'll worry about that when it gets here. Uh, temperatures this morning are going to be staying basically steady. Upper 50s, low 60s. We're not going to move all that much today, thanks to the humidity, thanks to the cloud cover. We'll still keep a couple of stray showers in, especially to the east and to the southeast. We're going to top off with a high temperature today up to 66. Seven degrees. Then the front's going to move through just after dinner time. Obviously, a little bit sooner in portions of the hill country. That may squeeze out another leftover little shower as it works its way on through here. But most definitely, it's bringing in windy and colder temperatures for the weekend. How cold is it going to be getting? And what are wind chills going to be feeling like? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ Marquez, what's going on, sir? All right, Mike, yeah, traffic move along pretty well through most of the city here after a pretty busy start during our 5 o'clock hours. Take a look behind me, State Highway 151 there. Traffic moving pretty good there. 281 Hildebrand, we had a crash that was reported earlier in the Almost Park area. That has been cleared out. 281 Loop 410 there. The flyovers, everything's moving along pretty smooth in both directions there as well. We still have this stalled vehicle being reported south of downtown. This is 35 southbound at uh, Cesar Chavez Boulevard. So it's going to be a little bit past uh, Buena Vista Street. This is going to be affecting our drivers coming in from the downtown area headed south to maybe I-10 or Highway 90. But the rest of the city, guys, everything's looking pretty good right now. We've cleared out one of those crashes there that we saw on the south side earlier. That was on Zazamora Street. Still have this crash here at Apple White and La Lone Star Pass. But again, it is off the highway. But still, if you're going to be traveling up and down uh, the Petit Jernton Freeway, just keep that one in mind. That's actually Highway 16. You may run into that if you're exiting off of Lone Star Pass or Apple White Road. But again, guys, despite the fact that we saw a wet start to our Friday morning, everything seems to be moving pretty well across the city of San Antonio. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. RJ, thank you. Daylight is expected to bring about another day of searching for a local girl who has been missing for more than two years. San Antonio police began going through a wooded area on the city's northwest side early yesterday morning, following up on a tip about the disappearance of Lena Kill. Katrina Weber is live where the search has been going on near Blue Mill Road and Gardendale. Katrina, you've been following this story since yesterday morning. Have police found anything? Well, they have not shared what, if anything, they found. Uh, what we have heard from a family friend is that the reason they stopped searching yesterday is because they need to bring in a piece of special equipment. And she says that that is scheduled to arrive later on this morning. Now, what we know so far is that uh, we watched yesterday as police and FBI agents went into the wooded area, mostly on their own. At one point, officers did bring in a dog and they had shovels nearby the whole time. But we were first to find out about this and arrived here around 8 yesterday morning, but neighbors say police had been out here for hours before that. 
An SAPD spokesman says that they started the search based on a tip that they got, and he says this is related to the case involving Lena Kill, who disappeared from an apartment complex about a mile away from here in December of 2021. She was three years old at the time. Now, right now, it looks like the officers who are here have been here all night just keeping watch over this area. But according to the friend of Lena's family, uh, the search is set to resume later on this morning, she says, about 8 o'clock. Reporting live near the medical center, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. New this morning, a man's in the hospital recovering after he was shot last night on the city's east side, and police are still searching for suspects. San Antonio police say this happened just after 9 p.m. A man walked up to some teens who were allegedly wanting to fight his son, and that's when the victim was shot by one of the suspects. He was taken to the hospital and is expected to be okay. The suspects took off in a silver or gray vehicle. They have not been found. An Amber Alert has been issued this morning out in Polk County. The Sheriff's Department is searching for 11 year old Audrey Cunningham. Now she has blonde hair, blue eyes and was last seen wearing a black hoodie with white lettering, black pants, black high top tennis shoes on the 100 block of Lakeside Drive. Now, if you have any information that could help police, you are asked to call the Polk County Sheriff's Office. That number is 936-327-6810. A boil water notice is still in place this morning for people who live in the city of Elmendorf. The city's public water system is saying it's because of a main break. Water should be boiled for two minutes before using or consuming. We'll let you know when the notice is no longer in effect. In your morning headlines from championship celebration to chaos, the Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl parade ended in gunfire, costing one person their life and injuring 22 others. A San Antonio family was there and caught in the commotion. Mariana Sanchez and her family made the trip from the Alamo City to Kansas City for her 11-year-old son, Justin. The trip served two purposes, to celebrate his favorite team, the Chiefs, and celebrate Justin's removal of a tumor. Now, Justin's homemade sign saying it all, tumor removed, 800 miles traveled, all in on the Chiefs, hashtag dream come true. Justin and mom say it was an amazing experience until tragedy struck. I'm okay, just still processing about it, just thinking about everything that happened. There were people crying on the street. Like, that's where it started to hit the magnitude of what just happened. The Sanchez family says they want to be a part of the Kansas City healing process as well, and they plan on donating blood to give back. Now to the latest with testimony from Fannie Willis. She's the district attorney leading the Georgia election interference case against former President Donald Trump. Trump wants her removed from the case because she had a relationship with the top prosecutor. If Willis is removed, it could derail the entire case. ABC's M. Wynn has the moment Willis took the stand and spoke with her relation about her relationship with the prosecutor. In a surprise move, the district attorney in Donald Trump's election interference case in Georgia, Fonnie Willis, chose to testify yesterday, answering deeply personal questions. It's highly offensive when they try judge. to implicate that you slept with somebody the first day you met with them, and I take exception to it. A judge is considering whether Willis's romantic relationship with prosecutor Nathan Wade created a conflict of interest. If the judge removes her from this case, it could delay or potentially derail the proceedings against Trump and his co-conspirators accused of trying to overturn the 2020 election results in Georgia. You're confused. You think I'm on trial. Willis lashed out at defense attorneys for their line of questioning. I think in one of your motions, you tried to implicate and slept with him at that conference, which I find to be extremely offensive. Trump's lawyers claim Willis benefited from her relationship with Wade, a man she hired, allegedly using his earnings to pay for expensive trips the couple took together. Willis testified that she paid Wade back, but there's no paper trail because she says she paid him back in cash. So the cash that you would pay him, you wouldn't get it out of the bank. I have money in my house. Willis says she and Wade ended their relationship in August last year, and she projected herself as a self-made woman who pays her own way. I don't need anything from a man. A man is not a plan. A man is a companion. I don't need anybody to foot my bills. Overnight, Trump reacted on social media, claiming Fonny never paid cash. She got free trips and other things from her lover, a giant scam witch hunt.
Today, Trump could learn his fate in the civil fraud trial that threatens his real estate empire. The judge could ban the former president from ever doing business in New York again and could force him to pay a $370 million fine. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. 610, 61 degrees. Still ahead for all gamers out there, four Xbox games are coming to Nintendo Switch and PS5, which ones could expect to play soon. Outside with live cam, kind of a misty morning, 61 degrees. Grab a jacket, grab your shorts and flip-flops, grab an umbrella, just keep it all handy. <laughs> we'll explain why coming up. 614, welcome back and good morning. Our last average freeze, according to our Weather Authority team, is February 24th. We may even have a light freeze this weekend in parts of our viewing area. So that means it's time to start cleaning up the garden and getting your soil ready so you can get planting very soon. In this segment of Gardening with Case Hat, Sarah Costa joined us now in studio to show us how to get your garden beds ready for spring planting season. And I'd, I think this is going to be in my new catchphrase for you. Good morning, Green Thumb. Good morning. Oh. <laughs> well, it's officially yardio season when you get your cardio in, in the yard. Like that. You like yeah. that. I spent eight hours in the yard cutting back and cleaning my garden beds this week. I am very sore, but it was all worth it because now was the time to clean up anything that died back from this winter and get your soil ready. Does your garden look sad like this? Let's turn it into this. So here's what you need. Some of my favorite garden tools that I use all the time include my handy spade, a pruner, loppers, mini electric trimmers, and electric weed eater. For any additional tools I need, I head over to Rainbow Gardens. I'm in desperate need of new pruners. I also use my tiller all the time, especially when making new beds. Plus, if I can put this together, anybody can. When you prune back your dead native perennials, or in my case, need to use a weed eater, don't be afraid to get in there. When in doubt, most native perennials can be pruned down to the ground or leave three to six inches, especially if they are woody like lantana or certain salvias. Let's talk soil. Good soil means a great garden and a quality compost. I like to get mine from Rainbow Gardens, like Nature's Creation Organic Compost, Box Farm Happy Frog Soil Conditioner, or Landscaper's Pride Mushroom Compost. You want to prep your soil two to three weeks before planting, and right now would be a great time to add compost to existing beds. If you are making new beds, till up native soil at least a foot or so into the ground, then add about three inches of compost. For new beds, make sure you're planting in an area that gets plenty of sun. Yeah, and so we may have a light freeze in our area, like Mike has mentioned, light, brief, but I think we should be okay to cut back, especially on those established native perennials. And if you are worried, of course, you can cover your plants. Mark and Steph. Thank you, Sarah. But now 616, 61 degrees. Let's check back with RJ and those wet roadways. Yeah, my biggest takeaway, Sarah, Yardio. I love that. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Brevity, I'm all about it. <laughs> Yardio. <laughs> all right, guys, uh, take a look here. Traffic, uh, things have actually cleared out. So despite the fact that we got a rainy start to our Friday, traffic actually looking pretty good through most of the parts of San Antonio. I saw an emergency vehicle passing through there. 35 at 90, there was a crash that was reported there uh, about 30 minutes ago. That has been cleared out. I-10 at Proband there on the south side. We have got uh, clear, smooth sailing traffic for the most part throughout the city in San Antonio. And that's exactly what our maps are indicating right now. Still have that crash. It's actually being reported as a car fire there. This is going to be on Lone Star Pass at uh, Apple White Road. So off the highway there, Highway 16. Uh, but again, no major incidents or delays to let you know about at the moment. But of course, we are heading into the weekend, and that means that we have got some construction that's going to be taking place. 1604 and I-10. So I've been looking at the TxDOT email, trying to figure out exactly what <laughs> exactly what's going to go on here, because some of the wording can be a little bit confusing when you look at it. But the big Biggest thing is that the two clover leaves, uh, two of the four clover leaves, will be shut down this week, and that's going to be I-10 westbound to 1604. So again, I-10 westbound, or you're coming this direction, you're not even going to be able to get onto any part of that clover leaf there. If you're going to 1604, that's going to be shut down as well. So the similar detours are still going to be in place. That's going to be the detours uh, 1604 Vance Jackson to La Quintera Parkway, and also uh, UTSA uh, UTSA Boulevard up to the rim as well. So again, guys, some of the wording can be a little confusing, but the biggest thing is that uh, from I-10 westbound, the clover leaves, the two 
that are right there are going to be shut down uh, that go to 1604 West, if that makes sense. If, if that's confusing at all, look for RJ in the same suit directing traffic. <laughs> yes, this week. exactly. Yes, I'll be out there with the traffic officers. <laughs> well, well, the little arrows you put there, the red ones, that, that's helpful. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. basically, helpful. yes, yeah. red means closed. <laughs> Stay away from yeah. that area. Stay there. away. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Anything on that side of 1604? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. All right, uh, hitting the bus, sitting the roads this morning and hopping on the bus. Um, you really don't need my well, light rain jacket. Yeah, Very good idea. With, with a hoodie. Yeah, and we'll have a couple little sprinkles around throughout the rest of the morning. Temperatures are going to be basically steady, low 60s, upper 50s. We are 15, 16, 17 degrees above normal right now. Not going to warm up that much today. Basically a, a normal high temperature, if you will. 67 degrees. Rain's going to continue to taper off. It'll slide off to the east, and then we are going to be waiting for that big front to move on through here later on tonight. So take a look at uh, radar, uh, or excuse me, first of all, our view from our camera down there at Brook City Base, and uh, it's kind of a kind of a murky sort of a morning. And radar, well, the computer models nailed this one as far as unfortunately no rain in the hill country, and the vast majority of the rain, as you can see, is well down here to the southeast. Even a, a line of some uh, some decent showers that are. That whole line is kind of sliding up to the northeast, but everything is going to be working its way to the east. A little bit closer in, and you can see that we've got still a few showers here in downtown up uh, to the northeast by Kirby, heading in almost toward Shirts over there by Randolph as well, and then down around Lytle. But then SeaWorld, Leon Valley, you're not seeing any of this rain as of right now. We will continue to have a couple of showers hanging around here throughout the next few hours. And then, like I said, everything's going to continue to shift off to the east. And I think all the, the models are doing a pretty good job and pretty much in agreement that this sticks around through morning and then by noon continues to work its way off to the east. We'll still have a few of these showers off to the east. We'll take that in into consideration in the forecast out there and then basically just cloudy skies. Now this line right here, that's the front that's going to be working its way through here after dinner time here in town and it's going to turn windy and then the colder air will continue to get pulled on in here and get pumped on in in the overnight hours. So we're looking at some uh, pretty decent wind chills by tomorrow morning. As a matter of fact, in the early morning hours down feel like down in the low 30s, 20s by right around daybreak and at times it's even going to feel like the upper teens in parts of the hill country as far as wind chills and that'll be the case throughout a good chunk of the day because temperatures in the hill country and north of san antonio really won't get above 50. now obviously even though it's 50 degrees, the formulas don't come into play. It's still going to feel really cold with that wind out there. Huge Arctic air mass covering the northern portion of the country. Uh, 13 below right now at Cuntbank, zero at International Falls. But notice on the satellite picture how all this, yeah, that cold air is spilling down here, but notice how it's kind of shifting off to the east. That's the way the upper level winds are working. So we're just getting a little taste of it that's going to be coming on through here with the front that works its way on in here tonight. Cold weekend. Yes, we are going to be hitting freezing here in town by Sunday morning. And then look what happens after that. This ridge starts to build on in here. And this is why we're going to be going from heavy coat Sunday morning to shorts and t-shirts by the middle of next week with temperatures that are going to be approaching 80 degrees by next week. Today, we make it up into the mid upper 60s around here. Rain the first portion of the day that continues to work its way on out. The front moves through this evening. Windy overnight down to 42 in town tomorrow. But but colder in the hill country, obviously, it's going to be tough to hit 50. Stay in the 40 in the hill country and we've got those blustery winds all day long. So it's going to be cold tomorrow and then freezing on Sunday morning up to 58. Good looking day, just chilly. Cold start Monday up to 70 and then like I was talking about flirting with 80 degrees by the middle part of next week. I think Mike. I mean, Mark was right about uh, the wardrobe earlier. He said, just have everything, you know, yeah. rain jacket, shorts, yeah. and a coat. That's or those yeah. pants that zip off, you know. To make <laughs> I have those. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I, ha I have those. For game time. 622, 61 degrees. We'll be right back. <laughs> this is how it feels to do more with less asthma, thanks to Dupixent. Dupixent is not for sudden breathing problems. It's an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma and can help improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks. Dupixent helps prevent asthma attacks and can even reduce or eliminate oral steroids. Imagine that. 
Dupixent can cause allergic reactions that can be severe. Get help right away if you have rash, chest pain, worsening shortness of breath, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor about new or worsening joint aches and pain or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Who knows what you can do when you do more with less asthma? Ask your doctor about Dupixent, the most prescribed biologic for asthma. Four Xbox exclusive games are coming to PS5 and Nintendo Switch as part of Microsoft's strategy to expand games beyond the company's Xbox consoles. Microsoft didn't name the games just yet, but they're reported to be a Hi-Fi Rush, uh, Pendiment, Sea of Thieves, and Grounded. The company behind ChatGPT is out with a new text-to-video software. So these videos were not shot by a camera. They were created by an artificial intelligence program called Sora. So it can produce photorealistic video from simple instructions. Sora isn't available to the public yet. That stuff blows my mind yeah. still. Uh, and finally, YouTube Shorts is adding music video remixing. The new feature comes as TikTok sits in a licensing battle with Universal Music Group, which has led to the loss of tracks from artists like Taylor Swift, Drake, and others. YouTube already has access to UMG's libraries. Time now is 627 and 61 degrees out there. Before we head to break, let's look at TransGuide. Roads look pretty good right now, but keep in mind, they are slick in some spots. So watch out on those sharp curves like that one right there at 281 and Hildebrand. Let's go outside with live cam. Sun's trying to come up. We have some clouds around and we had some moisture in the early morning hours in the form of some mist. We'll talk to Mike in a moment. Good morning. Happy Friday. It is February 16th. Mike Osterhage says weather's going to get a little wacky in the next couple of days. <laughs> it's just going to be sort of all over the place. We've got a few showers out there right now. Nothing is showing up in this picture, but we do have some rain on the south side. I'm going to show you that in just a moment. Temperature right now stands at 61 degrees. Dew points at 56. So still a lot of moisture hanging around here. Wind is out of the south. Now, wind is going to become a factor later on tonight when that front moves on through here. But prior to that, we do have some rain. So again, out there at the airport, no rain as of right now. South side of town, you folks are still getting uh, some of this basically light rain. Then we've got this one line right here of a couple of uh, decent downpours. That is moving its way up to the northeast. The rain is, but the whole system is kind of shifting to the east. And we even have a couple little spots of a few decent downpours moving through uh, right around northern Atascosa County, heading in toward Pleasanton. Rain's going to be sticking around. Unfortunately, by the way, as you see up there in the hill country, you're not getting anything and not going to get anything. The rain's going to be sticking around throughout the rest of the morning, continuing to shift off to the east as the, uh, the morning rolls on and this afternoon. 61 in town. 59 Helotus. Everybody is averaging 15, 16 degrees above normal. We should be in the mid 40s right now. Mold and ash are both on the low side. Once again, no mountain cedar. Now, it'll be interesting to see once that front moves through tonight. We've got some blustery conditions tomorrow. If there's any mountain cedar left this weekend, we will probably be seeing it if, like I said, it is left. Uh, rain early, the front moves through this evening. That may also squeeze out another shower as that line moves on through here this evening. It'd be a very narrow band of rain. And then tomorrow, mostly cloudy skies, windy and colder. We're going to be dealing with wind chills down in the mid to lower 20s in portions of the hill country tomorrow morning. Going to be blustery all day long. Definitely bundle up. Skies clear, winds diminish, and that means cold Sunday morning. We're looking at a freeze here in town. Gorgeous day then Sunday and we'll make it into the upper 50s. So still definitely jacket weather. Start off cool Monday and then after that we start a big warm up. So it goes from you know wind chills in the low 20s and even upper teens to close to 80 degrees by the middle of the week. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, wet roads hasn't been too bad out there, has no, it? No, not too bad. Uh, we did see a lot of activity during our 5 o'clock hour, Mike, but uh, things have kind of cleared out. Now we are seeing a few other things sort of pop up, but nothing too major at the moment, which is good news if you're about to head out right now. Taking a look at TransGuide traffic cameras here, 35 Eisenhower Road. Traffic moving pretty good in both directions there. 35 and New Braunfels, same situation there as well as we see our traffic moving through the city of San Antonio. So so a couple of things now being reported by Textile. We have a stalled vehicle, 37 North 
northbound at Loop 410 on the far south east side. So you can see it's causing a little bit of uh, traffic delays right now. Something we will continue to keep it our eye on. If you're coming up from 37, maybe you want to exit Old Corpus Christi Highway. That's uh, State Highway 181 if you want to try and avoid this right now, 37 and 410. And closer to the downtown area, this has been kind of a trouble spot that we've seen throughout uh, most of the morning here. We're now seeing a stalled vehicle being reported 35 southbound at US 90. Remember, there was a crash a little bit earlier there at Powell Street and then another disabled vehicle in Nogalitos, but this is our latest incident in this area there, 35 southbound at US 90. The rest of the city, everything else is looking pretty good, starting to see traffic kind of build up a little bit more. And again, we've been dealing with some wet roads out there, but for the most part, everything else is looking pretty good across the city. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. A wooded area on the city's northwest side could hold answers to uh, to more than two year mystery. San Antonio police plan to resume a search out there this morning. Following up on a tip about the disappearance of Lena Keel. Now Katrina Weber is live where the search has been going on near Blue Mill Road and Gardendale. Katrina, we understand this has been attracting a lot of attention from neighbors. Yeah, it really has. Most of the people who I talk to say that they've been following this case ever since Lena Kill, who was just three years old at the time, disappeared back in 2021. And they say they really just want to know whatever happened to her. Now, police want to know also. They say they launched this latest search for her after getting a tip yesterday. Now, we were out here around 8 in the morning and saw officers, along with FBI agents, searching the woods near Blue Mill and Gardendale Roads. At one point, they brought out a dog and they always had shovels nearby. Lena disappeared from an apartment complex playground about a mile away from here. And people all over the city, though, have been deeply affected by this. Now, after searching most of the day yesterday, police uh, officers suddenly packed up and started to leave. We do have a few that are still here right now, and they've been watching over this site all night. Now, according to a friend of Lena Kill's family, uh, police stopped the search because they needed to bring in a special piece of equipment, and she did tell us that they're going to have that, and they will resume the search around 8 o'clock this morning. Reporting live near the medical center, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Near this morning, San Antonio police are searching for the person they say stabbed their neighbor overnight. This happened last night just before 10 on Little Creek Drive near Loop 410. That's on the south side of town, and police tell us an argument started between two neighbors when one of them stabbed the other several times and took off. No word on the condition of the victim. Also overnight, a driver crashes into the front patio of a home on the east side. This happened just after 10 on Mittman near MLK. The man told officers something went wrong with the car, causing him to lose control, go off the road, through a fence, and onto the front patio of the home. We're told he also hit a gas line. CPS Energy crews were called in to look at it. The good news, no one was hurt. Governor Greg Abbott will be back at the border today for a press conference to discuss the ongoing migrant crisis. And presidential candidate Nikki Haley will be in downtown San Antonio later today for a rally. Our Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio with our political headlines. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Good morning Mark. Good morning, Steph. Yeah, the former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley pitching herself to Texas as the one to spearhead a new conservative movement as she wages her long shot bid to deny former President Donald Trump the GOP nom for president. More on that in just a bit, but first let's head to the border. Governor Greg Abbott will be making a visit to Eagle Pass today to hold a press conference about border security. Governor Abbott will be joined by the head of the Texas Military Department, Major General Thomas Sulzer, and Texas Border Czar Mike Banks. The conference is set to start at 1 p.m. KSAT will have a crew there. We'll bring you more information on air and online. This afternoon, 52-year-old Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley is coming to San Antonio for a meet and greet with voters. This is part of her two-day fundraising swing through Texas. She stopped in Dallas last night and also stopping in Houston. She'll be at Viva Via at the historic Market Square at 1.30 this afternoon. The event is free. However, attendees must register prior to the event for a ticket. A link to tickets, you can find that on our website, KSAT.com. And here are a few reminders before primary voting gets underway. Friday next week is the deadline to apply for a mail-in ballot. Early voting for the primary begins next week on Tuesday. And of course, Election Day is on March 5th. If you want to take a look at the voting locations and a sample ballot, you can just head to our website, 
KSAT.com, where we have all that information and what you need to know before you head out the door to go and vote. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Sarah. And this morning, community members on the northwest side say they are determined to make their voices heard about a proposed county park. They were supposed to meet with County Commissioner Rebecca Clay Flores yesterday to give input, but that meeting was postponed. Our Avery Everett took to social media explaining the issue and shows us how you can share your opinion, too. Have you heard of the county park that's dividing the northwest side community? The Bear County Precinct 1 Commissioner Rebecca Clay Flores has been pushing for this project since she helped secure about $3 million in the county budget to build this proposed park near the Hilltop Acres neighborhood. The commissioner was supposed to have two community input meetings, but she postponed the second one to wait for a feasibility study. At that first meeting, the community was divided. People in favor say they need a park for this community. I have two children and you know, there's many residents here in the area with children. I think that could benefit from a park. But people opposed say they don't want it in this neighborhood. We do not want the homeless. We do not want the crime that is going to go along with having a walking trail. Both sides have started petitions to keep this discussion going and the county is also accepting feedback. But we want to hear back from you directly. What do you want this park to go? And do you even want it in your neighborhood? Leave us a comment on Facebook or Instagram. Again, that was our Avery Everett reporting. Another San Antonio area school district going to a four-day school week. Bandera ISD trustees approved the change in the district's 2024-2025 calendar earlier this week. Students and teachers will have Fridays off, with the exception of some teacher work days. Bandera is one of several Texas school districts to make the change. Lavernia switched to a four-day work week this school year. Friday morning, 640, 61 degrees. After the break, what new home buyers should look out for when buying and what products can help you save some money. Welcome back, everybody. It's just about 644. Buying a new house is exciting, but whether you buy an old home or a new one, trust us when we say you will deal with surprises. So 12 on your size, Marilyn Moritz shows us some not so obvious products that could save you a lot of money down the road. Home ownership is great until it's not. Heavy rains flooded Paul Hope's lower level last fall. He even had a sump pump already installed. And we thought we had done what we needed to do by having a sump pump in the first place. Unfortunately, it failed while we were away. If your home's lower levels are prone to flooding, he says look for a sump pump with a battery backup for when the power goes out. Even without a flood, you want to avoid any water damage. That's where technology can save the day. A leak detector system will alert you to any leaks in your home, and that can save you thousands on potential repairs. Consumer Reports recommends this X-Sense Wi-Fi water leak detector. It has a hub with a siren and three wireless sensors so you can place them at trouble spots in your home. Then there's our humidity. It can creep into your house. A dehumidifier can reduce it. CR recommends this Medea large capacity dehumidifier. It removes moisture and is energy efficient. And this inexpensive gizmo is a humidistat. It can help you keep tabs on your home's humidity levels. A homeowner should also have a toolbox with essentials like a hammer, screwdriver, and drill. Put a few flashlights and extra batteries on your list, too. You'll want to keep your home secure, so this Simply Safe system got top scores in Consumer Reports tests. It has self or professional monitoring plans. Finally, for home safety, you're going to need these a fire extinguisher and smoke detectors. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. Just about 646. Go ahead and check back with RJ Marcus. All right, guys, things starting to pick up as we expected here on a Friday morning as more people get out onto the roadways. Taking a look at Trans Guide real quick. 151, you just saw traffic moving pretty good there. 281 and Hildebrand in the Quarry area, almost park area. Traffic moving pretty smooth there in both directions. We do have a couple of things to let you know about. We've been following this stalled vehicle there, 37 northbound, Loop 410. You can do see now it's causing a bit of a backup here in this area on the far southeast side. Uh, you know, you may want to think about taking 181 if you want to try and avoid this area altogether that turns into South Bresa actually so just keep this one in mind if you're headed out on the far southeast side a little bit closer to the downtown area south of downtown we have a stalled vehicle being reported 35 southbound at US 90 and uh, this area is already very busy to begin with so you do see some traffic starting to build in both directions there on 35 at 90 and the northwest side now this one just uh, popped up on TxDOT's website I-10 westbound at Dig Zavala Road uh, just saw the transguide camera 
camera. It looks like we have a couple of emergency officials out in this area there. Westbound traffic headed up to Dezavala, headed up to 1604. And speaking of 1604, that's where we're going to focus on right now because we have uh, some construction closures to let you know about starting tonight, 9 o'clock, and going through Monday, 5 a.m. So kind of the same thing that we've been seeing over the past couple weekends or so. And, of course, this is all weather permitting. Uh, Textile will be shutting down two of the four clover leaves as part of the 1604 expansion there at I-10. So the biggest takeaway here is that we're going to have the I-10 westbound clover leaf to 1604 westbound. That is going to be shut down throughout the, the entire weekend starting tonight. Again, this is all weather permitting and I think we have that video. Let's see if we could roll that that drone video that we've been showing you over the past couple weeks or so. So uh, yeah, just a lot of work out there, an ongoing project that TxDOT is doing. They've had to delay a couple of the work because of the weather that we've seen over the past couple of weekends, but they do expect to get those clover leaves, uh, those connector ramps uh, worked on this weekend. So again, they're not installing those beams that we've seen over the past few weekends, but this is going to be all the work there on the clover leaves, I-10 westbound to 1604 west. Try and avoid the area if yes. at all possible. We well, always appreciate yeah. the heads up. Yeah, well, at least it's a partial closure, it's a not partial, the entire yes. area. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it helps a so little bit. That's good news. Yeah, there is some still some ways to get around there. It's not the full closure, so that is some good news. Yeah. Very good. I'm just curious if the wind tomorrow is going to hamper any yeah. of that construction yep. too, if they're mm -hmm. you know lifting anything on those those cranes or anything. So because it is going to be really windy tomorrow, plus very cold temperatures. All right, look at what somebody sent in a picture of. Oh, a little early oh, blue bonnet. Little, little blue bonnet. I'm wondering if all the rain that we had in the past few weeks is really going to help out the blue bonnet crop this year because, yeah, it should be gorgeous because. Past couple of years, we haven't had a heck of a lot, have we? And I think that may be really? obviously because of the, the dry conditions. But anyway, yeah, and, and when you see those blue bonnets, make sure you send the pictures in as well. Take the pictures safely, of course. All right, we're starting to see a little bit of a, a glow. Plenty of clouds out there, but the glow of the, of the sunrise. Sun's going to be peeking over the horizon if indeed Clouds will let it uh, peek through about uh, 7.15 this morning. All right, as far as rain, we do still have rain. Obviously, some down here to the uh, southeast. This one little line right here, very narrow line of some moderate and even a couple of heavier downpours. And you can see the individual, that line is working its way up to the northeast. But the whole thing is kind of sliding to the east. And we will see still some, uh, some leftover showers that will continue to work their way up into San Antonio. You can see how, again, these individuals showers are moving up to the northeast. The whole batch slides to the east then later on this morning. So that's what we will be seeing as far as the clearing out. The individual showers move up this way. This whole thing pushes off to the east by late morning, early afternoon. A few leftover showers obviously off to the east and then basically just cloudy skies after that. And then tonight, Right there, that's the front that's going to be moving through here in town just after dinner time. Again, it may squeeze out a couple little sprinkly showers, but nah, you know, one or two of them, that's going to be about it. Wind chill, you know, we we're just talking about the wind, cold temperatures tomorrow. So we're going to be looking at wind chill and this is uh, early, early in the morning. It feels like uh, right around freezing in Kerrville tomorrow morning and it's going to get even colder by nine o'clock. Look at that. It's going to feel like 18 degrees in Kerrville. As the windy conditions stick around here, we get very cold tomorrow and it's going to stay windy all day long. So we'll be dealing with wind chills all day long as well. Now, Sunday is going to be a different story because we won't have the wind. We'll have clear skies, but then we see the coldest temperatures on Sunday. And this is just a little taste of the really, really cold Arctic air mass up there in the northern tier of the United States. 13 below right now in Cutbank, but unlike a couple of weeks ago when we had that really cold Arctic blast got down in the teens, all of this is primarily shifting to the east. So we just get kind of kind of grazed by it. That's why this is only going to last for a couple of days. Then we start to, to get into a heat up as we go into next week. So it's really kind of one extreme to the other. We're going to be freezing Sunday morning and that front moves through here tonight. Windy tomorrow, so blustery, cold all day tomorrow. Gorgeous day on Sunday. And then after that, we go from, again, freezing Sunday morning to, oh, roughly 50 degrees warmer by midweek, up in the mid to upper 70s, and lots of sunshine next week. Thank you, Mike. 651, 61 degrees. Look out there with live cam for right now. Yeah, a little bit of uh, wet roadways out there. And not too bad, though. You'll still need maybe a hoodie or a ring, an umbrella. We'll be right back. It's about five minutes till seven. 
Let's go ahead and check back with RJ. All right, guys, last check of traffic here. Traffic moving along in most parts of the city pretty well, but a couple of things to let you know about. We have still the stalled vehicle, I-37 northbound at Loop 410. You do see it's starting to cause a little bit of delays here all the way to State Highway 181. That would be the Corpus Christi Highway. Rest of the city, biggest thing we're looking at here is a stalled vehicle, Days of Alla Road and I-10 westbound. That just showed up on our maps right now, so keep that one in mind if you are headed to the northwest side. Speaking of the northwest side, we're going to have another big closure this weekend starting tonight, 9 p.m., going through 5 a.m. Two of the four clover leaves will be shut down at the 1604 expansion. And also want to let you know it's going to be very busy downtown because we, of course, have that Nikki Haley event taking place there at Market Square. Mike, and I know you're going to be yes. <laughs> obviously probably dealing with some Yes, of that we were traffic. talking about that yeah. because that's right at uh, SA Live time and getting yes. down there. And yeah, it's going to be, and plus there's all the construction down there yep. as oh, well on uh, Dolorosa. So, all right, we've got some rain left over southeastern half of San Antonio, and that's then the southeastern half of our viewing area. And then that line of some uh, moderate uh, showers going from Cuero back down just to the south of Pleasanton. The rain will continue to stick around for the next few hours and then work its way on out of here. Temperatures are averaging about 60, way above normal, of course. 67 later on today, and then that front moves through tonight. It is going to be windy, and we're going to have wind chills down in the 20s in the Hill Country tomorrow morning, only 50, and then a we'll freeze on Sunday morning, but back to shorts and t-shirts next week. I think you said it earlier. There are visitors out there. Welcome to San Antonio yes, and all of our temperatures. I'm normal. So. <laughs> have a good weekend.